So Garnett Bailey, he's a hockey player in the 60s and 70s, and Garnett was so good that he led his team to two Stanley Cups uh, in the late 60s, early 70s and for the Boston Bruins. And he was a mentor to Wayne Gretzky in his rookie years. He kind of took Wayne Gretzky, who was the greatest hockey player in history. So this guy was his mentor, the guy who built into him. And then he retired, and the Edmonton Oilers, which is a weird name for a team, but anyway, they, they picked him up as a scout. They said, you're so good, we want you to go find the next best talent. You found Wayne Gretzky, like you saw the talent in him as a rookie, we'll go find that raw talent. So he went out, and he did so well that the Oilers won five Stanley Cups. And his name is on five Stanley Cups. Three for scouting and two for playing. The best in the world is on 11 times, and only a few people in between that are like eight, seven, six. He's on it five times. And so at some point, the, the Los Angeles Kings, they get excited about him, they said, we want to bring him on. And they bring him on. But the director of scouting was not really good. And in 2000, the, the let's not do that, Harvey. Um, the Los Angeles Kings had a terrible year. Like, it was like one of their worst years. And the big reason everyone said it was because of the scouts. And so the director of scout, scouting got fired. And Garnett got promoted to being the director of scouting. And so in this, so it is the pinnacle of his career. He travels to later that year to New Hampshire because every major league team, whether it's baseball, football, um, hockey, they have like an under team or a minor league team. And so their hockey, for the LA Kings, it's in New Hampshire. Um, and so he went to New Hampshire to check out this minor league team to see what players they could bring up to the pros. And so they, he found some good people, he was looking, taking notes, and he flew back, and here's a video clip of his flight back. passage from Matthew. This is going to conclude our Nuggets of Truth series. So if you guys can turn in your Bibles to Matthew 25. Okay. There are some extra Bibles up in the upper rows, I believe. Matthew 25. Starting at first one. Matthew 25. Verse 1. Yeah, if you want to put it up there, that's good. Thank you. Okay. You're one, two. Hey, listen, guys. This is important. This is more like the parable of the ten bridesmaids. So. Don't get all excited about the word virgin, it's bridesmaids, okay? Shh. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom, okay? Five of them were foolish and five were wise. And the foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. And so the point is, is that 
they have their lamp, but it doesn't have any extra oil in it. And so they were waiting a long time for the bridegroom, that's what verse 5 says, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. And then midnight came. And the bridegroom came, or here's the bridegroom come to meet him. And they woke up, turned, and they trimmed their lamps, they got their lamps ready. But the ones who didn't have the extra oil couldn't light their lamps. And the other bridesmaids said, oh, they're sorry, there's not enough for us to share. And so the, the, the foolish ones, they go to the store to try to get more oil, while the bridesmaids who were wise go to the party. But the door was shut by the time the foolish ones could get there. And what this story is, and the reason why this parable is here, is this comes right after in the Bible when Jesus is talking about the time and the hour is unknown when Jesus is going to return. Jesus does not promise us a perfect life. He doesn't even promise us a long life. He doesn't even promise you tomorrow. And what he says is this first part is he's like, be prepared is what he is saying. Be on watch. Have your heart in the right place. Because you don't know when God is going to show up. But he continues on into this next part, which is this parables of the bashful. So Jesus is just telling story after story. And he says that again, it will be, let's scroll down. Uh, yeah. Oh, back up. Again, it will be like a man who is on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two, and another one bag, each according to his own ability, and then he went on his journey. Now, as the story goes, the guy who had five bags and put his money to work got ten, the, or the guy who had ten, yeah, five bags got ten, two bags got four, but the guy who had one bag dug a hole, put it in the ground, and let it sit there. And when the master came back, he was rejoicing at the doubling of the treasure, but he scolded the one who only had put in one. And what he's trying to say here, what Jesus is pointing at, is first be ready, have a ready heart. Two, don't waste what God has given you. God has given you a gift of life, the gift of hope, and the gift of salvation. Don't waste that gift. Be ready to use it. Be ready to share it. And the last one down here, and these are all great to really read through, but we're going to just kind of hit them at different points because there's a lot of content. But the last one here is the sheeps and the goats. And the sheeps and the goats, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels are with him, he will sit at his glorious throne, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he'll start to separate people. Uh, he will separate people from one another as a shepherd shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And the, go the sheep will be on his right, and his goats on his left. And here's what he'll say. He'll turn to the sheep, and he'll say, and he'll say these words. He says, for, uh, he'll say to those on the right, Come, who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothing, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. And I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And they responded, but, Lord, when did you need any of those things? I didn't, we never saw you need those things. And his response is, when you did it to the least of these, you did it, the least of my brothers, you did it for me. And he says the same to the ghost, except he does the opposite. He says, you will not inherit. And how dare you? Because you weren't there to feed me. You weren't there to clothe me. You weren't there when I was in prison. And they respond the same way. Well, when did we ever see you, Jesus, that way? And his response is, 
Well, you didn't do it for the least of my brothers, so you didn't do it for me. And so this last part, what's really important is, is the brothers that it mentions here, when you didn't do it for the, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. What he's talking about here is my brothers and sisters in the faith. Those who are suffering alongside you, who are walking that you don't even notice. The thing is, is this world, we have a lot of sick and a lot of hungry and a lot of pain. And as believers, we should go out, we should minister to them. But Jesus makes it really important for us to notice those within our own community who are in need and to come alongside them. And the reason he goes really, really in deep to this is because he wants to point out is, what is your heart as a believer? Are you prepared? Are you prepared your heart in a way that says, God, if you return in this minute, in this very second, I would be ready for you. I have made peace with my life to where I could be in heaven right now. Have you used the gifts that God has given you to the fullest ability of what they are right now? Not what they're going to be in 10 years, not what they're going to be in 20 years, but right now. And does your heart reflect the salvation that you received? Does your heart reflect the very nature of hope that you've received? And are you graceful in the way that you've received grace? The thing is, is when I when I heard this story of Bernetta, the the tragic thing for me is, is that all I thought was he was going home. And all he thought was that his life was on this trajectory up and that he was going to be something. Instead of seeing who he had had been, a five-time Stanley Cup winner, a mentor to the greatest hockey player of all time. But his life was focused on what it would be. And I will admit, I struggle with that myself. My wife and I, we had a really interesting discussion this week. And I, there's, this, there's this scene in The Great Gatsby, the most recent one, don't watch it until you're older, um, where I, if you've seen the trailer, you've seen the meme, he, it's like fireworks behind him and he kind of does his finger up like this. It's Wait, Leonardo DiCaprio in a tuxedo. There's no meme. No, there's a meme with fireworks with him. I know that. <laughs> Let's see. You know, we got we got a little bit of time. Okay, life's gotta be like this, Gatsby. Just look, life's gotta be like this. Oh no, he's saying look it up. What? Look it up. Life's gotta be like this, Gatsby. You can scroll over and bring it back. Wait, what? Wait, what? It's hard. Wait. Life has to be like this, Gatsby. Gatsby. G A T S B Y. Okay, I'm not old. Gatsby. Oh. Gatsby. Oh. Oh. Gatsby. Oh. Gatsby. Okay, just the 16 second one. Where? Where? Is it this that, one? that one's fine. The 16 the second one. We don't you can't, you can't see glasses. back here. Are you blind? Yes. Oh, that's actually not the meme. The meme has the fireworks. Anyway, but this shot. You can play it over again. One more time. Okay. Okay. Oh, it is so Okay. Okay, guys. Actually, that's Clarissa's, but I keep logging out of, but it stays logged in. That's your. Uh, it's because you haven't logged out of Chrome. You have to log out of Chrome on your account and then it'll log out of Chrome. Okay. 
Guys, guys, bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. The point is, in this movie, he's saying to, to Tobey Maguire, He's saying my life's gotta be like this. And the idea is it's always on this trajectory of up. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with your life being on a trajectory of up. But it matters what you do on that trajectory. Guys, pay attention. The question is, are you, pro are you ready today to die? No. Yes. No. Yes. no. Are you? Would you say that you have used what God has given you to the best of your ability? That if you stood before God today, that He would agree. You'd probably say none of us probably would have that. But no. and do you live out your life like you have been saved by the God of the universe? Guys, the point of the message today is that life changes in a second. The last illustration I want to use is about a woman that some of you may know her story. Uh, she is in her 70s, I believe now. Uh, and she has one of the largest most impactful ministries in the world. She changes lives every day. She puts on camps. She has a radio show. But she never wanted that for her life. That was not her dream when she was your age. Her dream was to be a diver, a, an Olympic diver. And she was really, really, really good. Yes, and she died one day and injured her neck and she became a paraplegic and has been a paraplegic ever since. That means she cannot move anything below her neck. She is stuck in a wheelchair the rest of her life. I think she was about 19 years old. She is in her 70s and she is doing incredible things for the Lord and God has blessed her. And she's using her gifts to the best of her ability. But all of you have talents right now that may not be the talents that God uses in the future. But use them now to the best of your ability for what God can use them for now. Don't think of your life in this path of this is who I'm going to be tomorrow. Be the best you can be right now for God. Because you don't know what God's going to do tomorrow with your life. It is foolish of us to just go like this and go, I'm going to be there. Because if Johnny Erickson Cantata, the one who had the accident, uh, the one who, the diver, her name was Johnny, if Johnny just kept living her life this way, then she would live in regret the rest of her life and would have never allowed God to do what he did. And Garnett, he has a life that, to, to show for him. But I wonder if he can come on the stage right now in the humanistic mindset that he had and, and regret not doing more in the time that he had. So I, just, I challenge you guys this week, this year, this, this life. Be ready for God to take you at any time. Use what he has right now. And have the heart of somebody who is truly saved. Because if you are, your heart should be changing. Because God lives in you. The Holy Spirit dwells inside you. We're going to do something a little different today. As we wrap up, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to invite Colin up just to kind of uh, kind of end our, our time. We want to start doing this like a little recap and then just sharing what's coming up this week. Do you know what's coming up this week? Uh, dinner, right? Yes, okay. So we're, we're going to try this out. I don't know.
So let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. Thank you for these amazing students who love you, Lord. God, we ask that you would just prepare our hearts this week to do the things that you need us to do today and tomorrow. Not 10 years from now, not, not when we're older. God, maybe our life is on that upward trajectory and that you have that plan for our whole life, but you don't promise that to us. So may we be prepared to go today. May we plan to help others and serve well and use our gifts well. And God, may we have the heart of someone who is saved because you saved us and your Holy Spirit lives in us. We praise you and we thank you. It's in your son's name we pray.